So I thought I would just do a video reflecting on the first half of season one of Star Trek Discovery and what I hope to see from it next se next half season and where I think the series might be going. It's just going to be some loose fan project projections though, of course. Before I get into that though, just an FYI for you guys, I am super excited to let you know that I got to be featured on a podcast called A State of Nerdvana. It was an absolute blast. They hosted us along with JP from Egotastic Fun Times. I had a great time. It's very conversational. We kind of just shoot the shit about Star Trek, the Orville, other delightful nerdery, and I will put a link in the description down below if you would like to check it out. But without further ado, let's talk about this season of Star Trek Discovery thus far. I have so many mixed feelings about this season. I think that there were some moments that were a lot better than I expected, but ultimately the series did fall flat for me for a number of reasons. This might be a little repetitive because obviously I have been reviewing this season at each episode every step of the way. So this is kind of just going to be a summary of my feelings about the season so far. I thought that the pilot was not the worst episode of the series. I think that it had some good character building moments and they did make me feel enough things to Michael Burnham that when Giorgio dies in the second half of the pilot, I did feel things and I did want her to get revenge and be able to redeem herself and I, I did have feelings ab about this character which to me is the mark of a character with some potential because if I'm not feeling anything at all for the characters it is very very hard for me to stay invested in a show. For me it has to be at least partially character oriented or I start to zone out. So I did like the focus on building up her character there. My issue is I think the show becomes too bogged down in being narrative and focusing only on one character because we didn't really experience that with previous treks. There were definitely characters that were more main characters than other characters, but there were a lot more side characters that were given more expansion and more dimension. And then the, uh, there was a larger ensemble main cast that I feel like had a lot more equal shares of the screen time. And I feel like tying it down in the specialness of Michael Burnham or the specialness of Stamets, it just makes it harder for me to suspend my disbelief about the series and really just see it as people in the future exploring space. And it, that's a premise that I care about and that I really did want to see honored and I feel like it was honored more by the Orville than by Discovery because of how much they're trying to be Game of Thrones in space. And I think that's that's really what it comes down to is just a lot of sensationalism and a lot of this need to cram a lot of action and a lot of grittiness and a lot of darkness where it doesn't necessarily belong or need to be. And don't get me wrong, I don't dislike dark television shows or movies. I don't dislike gritty, dark content. My issue is I don't really like it in my Star Trek. Star Trek brands itself as being optimistic. There is an intense critique of, but also love of, humanity that you get to see in Star Trek in previous series, and I think that's what makes people feel so connected to it, is they're just very human stories with very human characters asking questions that we all in some ways end up asking ourselves as we grow and change through society and Discovery just doesn't do enough of that for me. It has its moments. It had some moments in Choose Your Pain. It had some great moments in Magic to Make the Sanest Man Go Mad. And I thought there were some really, really nice moments in C.V. Pakam Parabellum with the Pavans and Saru and the world building they did there. But for me, it just continues to fall flat because I, it just feels very corporate and very sanitized and very much like they're trying to sell me something more than that they're telling me a story because they love the story they're telling. And I feel like, and I said this actually in the podcast as well, I feel like one of the things that really tipped me off to what to expect from this series was when I was watching the theme song and I realized there were almost no actor names, but there were 
dozens of producers, dozens of them. There were so many producers. And I think overproduced is a good way to describe this series. It just feels, a lot of the time it feels very manufactured and it just feels like they're trying too hard to be too many things, but what they're really selling you is glossy Abrams Star Trek. And the funny thing is sometimes the new Abrams movies, they had their moments too. Like the first movie I enjoyed a lot more than I enjoyed the second one. I thought the first one did have some really fun, really, really emotional moments that I liked. And I feel like this series has some really fun, really emotional moments I like. I think that's why I stuck with it is I'm not quite ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater just yet. Star Trek is pretty infamous for having a rough time with first seasons. The first season of Next Generation is pretty much unwatchable if you don't already know and love the characters. The first season of Voyager, I would say, is one of the weaker seasons. The first season of Deep Space Nine is pretty tedious, and the first season of Enterprise was impossible for me to get through. I still haven't given it another chance yet. So what I'm hoping is that this Klingon arc ends early in the second half of the first season, and then we get to exploring space. And I, I just, I want them to try and pull a little bit away from this grim dark. It's okay for them to go there sometimes, you know? It's not like previous Star Trek never got dark, but I feel like when they go there, they go too far. I didn't need to see Klingon boobs. Full frontal Klingon boobs were not necessary. And this whole Ash is Vok thing, I don't know that you're wrong. It's not a bad fan theory. I don't not buy it exactly. It's just that <laughs> there's some weird implications there. Does he or does he not remember that he's Vok because he seemed pretty legitimately PTSD traumatized? Um, you know, what? What's the, what's the dealio here? Is he aware of it? Is he not? Part of me hopes he's not because I do kind of like him and Michael Burnham together, although I feel like they're focusing on the romance on a much more intense level than Star Trek usually does, especially so early on. And that bothers me a little too because, again, it's not a soap opera in space, and I'm scared that that's what they're going to start turning it into. And that's a lot of the time when The Walking Dead got most boring is when it was a soap opera with zombies. I don't want a soap opera in space. I have my teen dramas. I don't need my space dramas. I just need my space adventures. I think that hopefully with the feedback they've been receiving from fans and critics, future episodes that they haven't produced, I'm hoping they will pull back more on the grim dark stuff and I hope they'll focus more on trying to find some of the fun that Star Trek has. And I think, you know, the scene where they have Cadet Tilly swear, she says, oh, that's so fucking cool. That felt like they were trying to be fun, but it wasn't fun. It just felt forced. And I think that's the problem is while some of these character performances are really great, and I like some of these characters, and I like some of these premises, and sometimes I like the scenes and the stories in parts, for me, it, somehow it just never quite seems to come together to make an episode that I'm totally happy with. So I really hope that Discovery gets better in the future. I hope that they move away from the grim dark. I hope that they focus more on the good things about this series. And I hope that, I hope that it just captures more of the, the mood that the Orville has managed to capture. And I know some of you are frustrated that I keep comparing the two, but it's really hard not to when they're so obviously based off of the same source material, and it's so easy to see which one is more true to previous interpretations. And I'm not saying I want to see a rehash of all the next gen and Voyager stories. I would have loved if they would have set Star Trek Discovery after Voyager and then just done something totally new totally brand new, maybe explore some new region of space, maybe some new conflict with a new species of aliens, but give me something new. Don't give me prequels, don't give me sequels, just give me something fresh and new. And, oh, I guess that would technically be a sequel. Shut up, this is harder than it looks. Anyway, I... I'm going to be canceling my subscription to CBS All Access and I think going to f just use an unblocker to watch Discovery on Netflix because I'm so frustrated by it and I'm not willing to pay for it anymore. 
but I will keep watching it because I, I will keep watching it through season two. If by their mid-season break in season two I'm not feeling it, I think I'm just gonna abandon this show, but I will give them through season two and I hope that this show gets better because I do see pieces that could be made into a good show. That is all I have for you on this. Again, I was featured on that podcast with Nerd, A State of Nerdvana, so please check that out in the description down below. It's a really fun time. They have lots of other great content, and I had an absolute blast with JP from Egotastic Fun Times as well. I'll link you to his channel down below. We'll be doing a collaboration soon, and I'm super psyched for that. That is all of the things now. Have a fantastic rest of your day, my dudes. Vita Zane.